Hey everybody, it's Liz Baccalini. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Liz Baccalini. I'm super excited to be back with you all. And I've got a two player game to talk about today. And that's Beer and Bread. This is from Capstone Games. In this one, you and your opponent are working to gather resources and then using some special abilities slash upgrades uh, to make both beer and bread. And there's going to be a special scoring twist in the end, but I will talk about that when we get there. So for now, let's go to the table and see how to play. All right, here is our beer and bread setup. So I'll explain the board quickly. So we've got our round tracker here. We'll go through six rounds. Um, these are our fields that we can harvest from. So you and your opponent share these fields. We've got wheat, barley, rye and hops and then we've got the river water uh, we also share that the side that we do not share is the sides on each side of the river um, we've got three kind of buildings here so we've got our brewery uh, where we make our beer uh, our bakery where we make our bread and then our storage um, barn or unit whatever you want to call it um, that's here. So each, the brewery and the bakery can each hold one card at a time. And I'll explain that when we get to the actions that we can take. The storage um, barn can hold nine of these resources. So you'll see it's divided into nine squares. Um, so we can put nine tokens in there. And then finally, we've got these places with different symbols on them. Um, those are two, they just identify kind of the type of, there's an upgrade action and we just tuck the card under and the symbol kind of identifies what kind of upgrade we're doing. Um, so I'll show you an example of that too. So in beer and bread, there are two types of rounds and you'll alternate them. So you'll do each round three times each. Uh, you're going to start out in a fruitful season. So in the fruitful season, we have more crops to harvest because it is fruitful. So um, we've got seven wheat, eight barley, six rye, six hops, and then water is always at max. So there is always river water to take. Um, you never remove any of the water tokens. So person with the windmill goes first and we each have a hand of five cards. So you'll see some of the cards are bread, some of the cards are beer, there's no guidance. It doesn't matter what arrangement you get. If you happen to get all beer, you get all beer. Um, and then the cards, uh, there's three actions you can take with the cards. So the first one is I'm going to harvest the resources at the top here. So if I play this card in front of me, I'm going to get one barley and one wheat. I'll take it from the field and then I will store them if anything ever runs out. Um, like if I was supposed to get two rye and there's only one left, I just take the one and that's too bad because we already harvested all the rest. If I play another card for the resources and it's got a matching symbol of a card I previously played, so like the wheat here are stacked, so both cards had wheat, I get two wheat now. So I get a water, two wheat, and a rye. Um, so that could be a strategy to kind of stack different symbols that you need in order to maximize the harvesting. The second thing I can do is fulfill an order. So actually I can fulfill this order, just lock up the, the draw. Um, it's going to be on the little blackboard looking thing here. So to bake this bread, I need one water and three wheat. So I'll take them out of storage and then I'll put them back in the common supply so they don't go back into the field. Just go over to the side. And then I'm gonna put this face down in my bakery. The last thing I can do is take an upgrade. That's on the bottom of the card with this little symbol. So this one says you have one additional storage unit. I am going to tuck that under the matching symbol on the board. There is no limit to upgrade, so it's not like 
oh, I need to pick a really good one with the bag symbol because I can only have a certain amount. There's not, and they carry over from every round, so there's no pressure to use the upgrade as soon as you play it. Um, like this one, I forever now have one additional storage unit. The way I work that is I just put the thing there so I know it's my extra unit when I, if I happen to have 10 at a time. When I upgrade, I also kind of clean out what I've sold. And the reason this is important is because the bakery and the brewery can only hold one card each. So if I didn't clear out the sold inventory and I tried to bake another loaf of bread, well, I can't because there's nowhere to put it. So when I do the upgrade action, I'm gonna clean this out. I just put it to the side. Um, and then I have the bakery inventory shelf, whatnot is free for me to bake another piece. So the twist in the fruitful uh, seasons is that once you play a card, you're going to then swap your hand with your opponent. So let's say they played a card. Now I get this new hand and then I decide what to do with the new hand. Maybe I want the resources again and so on until you've both played five cards. So after that, you are going to discard, not discard the ones you sold, just discard all the ones that you've played except for upgrades. Um, so any that you used to, basically any ones that you used to gather the resources will just go back in the bottom of the draw pile or you can have a separate discard pile. And then whoever has the fewest uh, resources stored goes first the next round and they get the little windmill token and then you'll play the next round. So the next round will be the dry season. Remove our little tracker. In the dry season, we do not swap hands. So we will be keeping our same cards throughout the round. There are also fewer resources to harvest. So now there are only five wheat. Um, there are only four barley. Uh, there are only four rye and four hops. Same amount of water. As I said, you never lose water. But uh, because it's dry season, there are fewer resources. There are also these cards that will come out and they're called exchange cards. And you'll take them just off the top of the deck and you'll place them. There are three slots above the round tracker and you'll place them there. These are optional. So if you see a card in the exchange section that you like, you can take it, but you have to play it when you take it. So I would say, okay, I don't really like this bread card, but I really like this one because I get an additional storage unit. I'll swap them. So the card that was in my hand is available for exchange. I immediately play this one and you can do it for whatever. I could have fulfilled an order. I could have gotten the resources, but I liked the upgrade. So speaking of storage units, if I have an entirely full um, barn or whatever you want to call it, um, I doesn't mean that I can't accept resources, but let's say I had all this full, including my additional one, and I just played a card and I got some barley and I was like, oh, I don't have any room, but I have so much rye. I don't need all this. I can choose to say, okay, let me get rid of these two rye and replace them. But I have to offer the discarded resources to my opponent. So sometimes you need to be careful what you choose to get rid of because it could really help them. Your opponent doesn't have to take the resources. If they say no, you just put it in the comments play. If they take the resources, they can also shuffle around um, what they want and don't want. So like if their storage is full and they say, yeah, I take the rye, I'll get rid of some of the hops that are in here, throw the hops in the common supply and then I'll replace it. So that is an option to pick and choose what you don't want, but the offering to the opponent is mandatory. So just think about being careful with what you offer because you have to offer. So 
at the in the dry season we're not swapping hands but anything that i played in order to gain resources let's say i played these three and then i fulfilled this order anything that i played for resources actually at the end of the dry season comes back into my hand so instead of discarding everything that i did for resources like in the fruitful season i actually take these three back and then i draw up to five so i'll take two new cards from the deck and i'll have five exchange cards go away and then we move the tracker up it's fruitful season again we refill all the fields and we start swapping hands until we get to the end of the game so after six rounds we will land on this symbol and it looks like a stack of coins so we're going to start scoring so first we are scoring just the beer and the bread separately so we'll score these separately so you will see that every card has this number with a token that is how much money we got for selling that item um, if something is still in your your inventory or like the brewery or the bakery at the end of the game, that's fine. It still counts because you did sell it. You just didn't clear it out, but that's fine because you still got the money. So let's say for bread, I scored 12 because I fulfilled these two orders. And let's say for beer, I only fulfilled this one order and I got six. Now, anything the coins here means that you have these coin upgrades this little symbol if you have anything under here this is where you add it to your score so for example i had this card at the game end for every two bread cards that you sold gain one extra coin for bread so i had 12 now i have 13 because i had that upgrade with those separate scores so remember i had 13 bread six beer only the lower score counts uh, in determining if I won. So I throw the bread points out because they were higher. And I say, okay, I had six points. Let's say my opponent scored as 14 for beer and 10 for bread. It doesn't have to match. So if I'm using my beer score, they're not necessarily also using the beer score. They're using their personal lowest, which in this case was bread. They had 10. Uh, so their score was 10 and mine was 6. They won the game because they had the highest of the two lower scores. So that's another twist. Um, so it really needs to be a more balanced like production. Um, so instead of trying to say, oh, well, I have all these bread cards and then I'll just fulfill, fulfill, fulfill and not worry about beer because I'm... Um, getting a super high bread score, you can't actually use that score if it's high or if it's higher, the higher of the two. So it does need to be balanced production. Um, and then that's it. It's just the card value when you sold, any coin upgrades you have, those are the only two things that you need to add together. And that is beer and bread. So let's go back to the table and we will talk about final thoughts. Okay, final thoughts for this I love this so i saw that this was going to be at pax it was in first look and then i made a note of it like yeah it looks kind of cool or whatever let's try it if it's open and then it was free so my friend and i tried it and it's nice that you only need two because you don't have that awkwardness of like oh we need to find people to play especially um when there's so like at pax there are just so many games people want to play sometimes it's like hard to find people to to play with you depending on like the time of day and the day that you're there so um this was it was good that you only need two um and i liked it way more than i thought i would like i was if i hadn't gotten to play it i would not have been upset but then when i played it we just got up and went to the capstone booth and then i bought it um <laughs> so i think it's i like the twists so it could have been like really boring i think if it was just like, okay, we just score these things in total. And then, yeah, maybe you get some upgrades and add them to your score. And then the person with the most points wins. Cool. Um, so I liked the lower, using the lower of the two because it makes you balance. And then I like the swapping hands because I, I'm sure some people will, will really not like that, especially if you're a really big planner where you're like, I already know what my five turns are going to be. But you can't do that because 
you need to kind of just hope that you get certain cards back when you're swapping because your opponent might use the one that you wanted to use. So I think that's cool. It's a little bit more unpredictable than just keeping the cards throughout. Um, and then another thing that I really appreciated was the token, like just the shape. Um, I think I always like when there's that extra effort of like, oh, I'm having trouble. <laughs> oh, it's a water droplet. Um, or like, oh, it's a sheaf, sheaf of barley. <laughs> Um, my friend said it looked like a spooky tree and it kind of does, which is funny. It looks like bark, but, um, I really like that they did that instead of, you know, it could have been colored discs or colored cubes. And that's also totally fine because they, it's still differentiated, but I always appreciate the extra effort with the, um, with the shape of the, of the crop, I think was, was well done. Um, so overall for this one, eight out of 10, that could go up the more I play because I'm really enjoying it. Um, definitely encourage you to just grab a friend, um, play it out. It's pretty short, easy to teach because there's not that many um, rules and there's not too many actions that you have to go over. So um, definitely, definitely try it and then let me know what you think. Uh, so that's Beer and Bread and I'm Liz Bacalini and thank you for watching.